own personal roadmap for retirement, highlighting all those twists and turns where smart decisions now, yeah, those can lead to some serious financial rewards later down the line. Then trust me, we're not just going to rehash those obvious milestones that everyone already knows. Okay, so have you ever like stopped and thought, why is turning 50 such a big deal in the retirement world? It's not just about hitting the big five zero. Right. It's about this uh, powerful tool that gets unlocked. It's called catch-up contributions. Mm. Basically, once you hit that half century mark, the government actually allows you to put more money into your retirement accounts. It's like they're giving you a chance to play catch-up, you know, if you haven't saved quite as much as you maybe wanted to by now. Okay, so it's like getting a financial head start just for turning 50. I like how this game works. But how much extra are we even talking here? So for 2023, if you've got a 401k, and that's the retirement plan a lot of employers offer, or a 403b, similar thing, but often used by nonprofits, you can actually contribute up to $30,000. That's a pretty significant jump from the usual limit. And for those with a simple IRA, you can add an extra $3,500 on top of that. Hold on, wait, it gets even better. So even your IRA, your individual retirement account, that gets a boost too. Absolutely. You get an extra $1,000 per year you can put in. Now, this is where things get really interesting because of something called compound interest. Imagine like a snowball rolling downhill, right? It just gets bigger and bigger as it goes. And that's basically what compound interest does for your money. The earlier you can put in extra cash, the more time it has to grow and it grows exponentially. So taking advantage of these catch-up contributions of 50, it's not just about saving more in the moment. It's about setting your future self up for like some serious financial gains down the line. That's a serious aha moment for me. It's all about strategy. Now, let's say you're a few years older, maybe thinking about switching careers or even early retirement. Age 55, that comes with its own set of interesting possibilities. Early retirement. Okay, now you've got my attention. What's the inside scoop on this one? Well, at 55, you've got the option to tap into your qualified retirement plans, like your 401k, without getting hit with that usual 10% penalty. So imagine, you know, transitioning to a job that's maybe less demanding, maybe a little less pay, but you've got more flexibility. This exception could let you supplement your income without totally messing up your long-term financial goals. Wait, so you're saying I could potentially retire early, take a less stressful job, and still take out some of my retirement savings without a penalty. That almost sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? All right, so the catch, and this is a big one. It only applies if you actually leave your job during or after the year you turn 55. So if you retire at, say, 54 and 11 months, you miss out on this particular benefit. And another important detail, this exception, it only applies to those employer-sponsored plans, not to your IRAs. Ah, uh, there's always that fine print, isn't there? So for anyone thinking about rolling their 401k into an IRA, this is definitely something to keep in mind. It's like playing chess with your finances. Every move has consequences. It's like <laughs> I can write the devils in the details. But hey, that's what we're here for, to uncover all those hidden clauses and make sure that you are playing this retirement game like a pro. But, you know, retirement planning, it's not just about you, is it? It's about making sure your loved ones are taken care of, too. Absolutely. That's such a crucial point. And that actually brings us to age 60. It's a milestone with, well, particular significance for widows and widowers. Okay, so at 60, what kind of support kicks in for those folks who've lost a spouse? So at age 60, a surviving spouse they become eligible to start collecting Social Security survivor benefits. That's huge. It's reassuring to know there's at least some safety net in place. Yeah. But are there any, like, stipulations or anything we should keep in mind about that? Yeah, so there are a few things to consider. First off, this does assume that the deceased spouse was actually eligible for Social Security, and the surviving spouse, they can't have remarried before turning 60. Right. Makes sense. And if the surviving spouse decides to claim these benefits before they reach their own full retirement age, the benefits will be reduced. However, it's important to remember that this reduction, it only affects the survivor benefits, not their own individual benefits, which they can claim later at a higher amount. So it's all about strategizing, figuring out what makes the most sense for their own personal situation. Exactly. And much like claiming your own Social Security benefits, there are earnings limits to keep in mind if you claim those survivor benefits before reaching your full retirement age. Any income you earn could potentially reduce the amount you receive. Got it. So it's all about weighing those options carefully. Speaking of which, no retirement roadmap would be complete without addressing the big one. Age 62. You said it. 
Age 62 is often seen as like the gateway to retirement, right? Yeah. Because it's the earliest you can actually claim your social security benefits. I think a lot of people, they hear social security in 62 and it's like, freedom, time to travel the world. Uh, so that's not quite that simple, is it? Not quite. See, claiming social security at 62 means that you'll receive a reduced benefit compared to if you waited until your full retirement age. And how much that reduction is really depends on your birth year. Basically, the later you were born, the larger the reduction. It all comes down to those life expectancy estimates. So what you're saying is there's no magic number. It's about figuring out what works best for each individual person. Absolutely. If you're in great health and expect to live a long life, delaying Social Security might make more sense. You'll maximize those lifetime benefits. But if you need the income sooner, maybe for health reasons or to, you know, finally pursue that passion project, Claiming early might be the better choice. It's all about finding that sweet spot. Now let's talk about another milestone that often goes hand in hand with retirement, age 65. Ah, yes, 65. For a lot of people, that's the age associated with finally saying goodbye to that daily grind. But more importantly, 65 is when you unlock a very, very important benefit, Medicare. Medicare. I feel like people talk about that in hushed tones, like it's some mythical creature. What is it about Medicare that makes it so crucial for retirees? Well, healthcare costs. They can really put a strain on your finances in retirement, let's be honest. Medicare provides a safety net. It covers a significant portion of your healthcare expenses. So it's like having a financial guardian angel watching over your health in retirement. But I'm guessing it's not as simple as turning 65 and poof, you're covered, right? You're right. There are some important details to be aware of when it comes to Medicare eligibility and enrollment. For one, you actually need to enroll three months before your 65th birthday missing that window, that could mean gaps in your coverage and potentially higher costs down the line. Whoa, three months before. That's good to know. Nobody wants to deal with those unexpected medical bills, especially in retirement. Absolutely. Speaking of being prepared, let's shift our focus now to ages 66 and 67. This is it, the holy grail of retirement ages, full retirement age. Well, kind of. Full retirement age is when you're finally entitled to claim your full Social Security benefit, no strings attached. But just like we talked about before, the exact age for full retirement age, it actually depends on when you were born. Wait, so it's not a one-size-fits-all situation? Nope. If you were born between 1943 and 1954, your full retirement age is 66. But if you were born in 1960 or later, it's 67. And for everyone born between 1955 and 1959, it's somewhere in between. So, moral of the story. Double check that birth certificate and the social security website to be absolutely sure. This stuff can get confusing. You got it. Knowledge is power, especially when we're talking about something as important as retirement planning. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. What's our last stop on this retirement roadmap? So much for that whole 65 and I'm out mentality, huh? It's like retirement planning has its own set of rules that keep changing. But hey, that's what makes it interesting, right? It's not just a one-time thing. It's this journey with all these milestones along the way. Exactly. And speaking of milestones, our final stop on this roadmap takes us to ages 72 to 75. This is when those, well, sometimes dreaded RMDs come into play. RMDs, mm. those three letters that can make even the most organized person you know, sweat a little bit. Okay, so for those of us who might need a little refresher, myself included, sometimes what exactly are RMDs and why should we even care? Sure, so RMDs stand for Required Minimum Distributions. Basically, once you hit a certain age, the IRS comes knocking and says, hey, time to start withdrawing a minimum amount from those retirement accounts every year. Even if you're healthy as can be and mm -hmm. don't really need the money yet. Yep. That's right. And just like with that whole full retirement age thing we talked about, the exact age you have to start taking these RMDs, it's changed in recent years. It all depends, again, on, you guess it, your birth year. Of course. So, like, what are we looking at? Well, for those born in 1950, it's 72. Born between 51 and 59, you'll start at 73. And anyone born in 1960 or later, they've got until age 75 before those RMDs kick in. Okay, so another reason to keep that birth certificate handy, I guess. But why does the IRS even care if we're taking money out of our own retirement accounts? I mean, it's our money, right? Well, you see, the government, they want to make sure they eventually get their share of taxes on those savings. By setting these RMDs, they're basically guaranteeing that they get their cut, even if you end up living to be, like, 110. Ah, uh, so it's all about making sure Uncle Sam gets his due eventually. But seriously, calculating those RMDs can feel like you're trying to solve some complicated math problem. 
They change every year based on your account balance, life expectancy, all that. You're telling me. Hmm. They definitely require a bit of planning. And it's important to remember there are penalties if you don't withdraw the right amount. Definitely not something you want to leave till the last minute. Not on my watch. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Our whirlwind tour of those milestone birthdays that can really shape your retirement journey. We covered a lot from those catch-up contributions that can supercharge your savings to navigating the ins and outs of Medicare and Social Security and even facing those RMDs head on. It's been quite the deep dive. Hopefully you're coming away from this feeling more informed, more empowered, maybe even a little excited about really taking control of your financial future. Absolutely. Because retirement, it's not just about reaching a certain age. It's about living those years to the absolute fullest, right? Now, before we wrap things up, I have one final thought I want you to ponder. If you could go back in time, talk to your younger self, and give them just one piece of advice about all these financial milestones, what would it be? Think about it. Maybe even jot it down. It's amazing what a little reflection can reveal. Couldn't agree more. And on that note, this deep dive has officially reached its destination. But remember, your retirement planning journey, that's just beginning. So keep exploring those options, keep asking those questions, and keep building the future you deserve. Until next time.